The first employee ever officially hired by Amazon has an idea that may surprise you. He thinks Amazon is a monopoly that should be broken up. Jeff Bezos is Amazon's founder and former CEO. He was working for investment firm D.E. Shaw when he and his boss David Shaw conceived the idea of the Everything Store, a hypothetical online retailer that served as a middleman between businesses and consumers. Shaw was focused on the growth of his own firm, but Bezos saw immense potential in the internet, so decided to form his own company. Though he was discouraged by many to not leave his cushy corporate job, Bezos and then-wife Mackenzie Scott packed up their lives and made a cross-country move to Seattle in 1994 so they could start their company from scratch. Obviously, that move paid off. Bezos oversaw the company's exponential growth across the 2000s and 2010s, which saw them develop several services and products for their customers, such as Amazon Web Services, Alexa, and Prime Video, and acquire other companies at a massive scale, including Whole Foods, Audible, and Twitch. Our company is uh, investing sort of ahead of the curve in order to fulfill customer demand. Bezos stepped down as CEO in 2021, and he's now focused on other endeavors such as Blue Origin, one of the world's leading civilian-run space travel startups. Amazon's second employee was Mackenzie Scott, Jeff Bezos' then wife. Scott first met Bezos at D.E. Shaw when she worked as an administrative assistant to help support her dreams of becoming a novelist. The two quickly fell in love, and barely one year into their marriage, Scott agreed to move across the country and help Bezos kickstart Amazon. Scott was quietly instrumental in the company's development. She worked as their first accountant, shipped orders through UPS, and he even helped come up with the name Amazon. It's basically Earth's biggest river, Earth's biggest bookstore. As the company grew bigger and bigger, however, she took a step back to focus on raising their four children, as well as work on writing her first novel. The result, entitled The Testing of Luther Albright, was released in 2005 to critical acclaim, leading to her second novel, Traps, in 2013. In 2019, Scott and Bezos announced their divorce. The final proceedings left Scott with a 4% stake in the company, making her one of the wealthiest women in the world. In turn, Scott has donated a vast amount of her fortune to a variety of causes through her philanthropy platform, Yield Giving. She has gifted well over 2,000 different organizations, amounts ranging from $5,000 up to a whopping $436 million. Amazon's first official hire was Shell Kappen, a programmer living in Santa Cruz, California. By the fall of 1994, he was convinced to join Amazon as its primary coder and begin building its website from scratch. His tireless hours of work gave Amazon a foundation in online retail, but Bezos' restructuring of the company in anticipation of its 1997 IPO diminished Kappen's role. Eventually, he was left with no managerial power and left the company in 1999 on bad terms with Bezos. After leaving Amazon, Kappen took a step back from corporate interests. He chose to remain out of the public spotlight and dedicate much of his wealth to founding and funding the Kappen Foundation, which provides grants to left-leaning organizations such as Planned Parenthood. In a 2020 interview with Frontline, he expressed concern over Amazon's monopolistic growth and supported the idea of breaking it up, saying, The main thing I am concerned about is just preserving the ability for small companies to innovate and to do so without fear of having their business taken away. One month after Shell Kappen joined the team, Jeff Bezos hired British-born programmer Paul Davis. Though he was only at the company for just over a year, Davis was instrumental in building Amazon's IT. However, Davis was also critical of Bezos and Amazon's workplace culture. He chose to leave Amazon before his stock was vested, both to spend more time with his newborn daughter and out of disinterest in seeing the company grow. In a 2019 interview with Recode, Davis publicly expressed support to break up the Amazon marketplace, saying, the company that operates the marketplace is also a retailer. They have complete access to every single piece of data and can use that to shape their own retail marketplace. Shortly after his stint at Amazon, Davis joined Linux Audio Systems and began programming free open source software for audio production. In 2002, he developed the Jack Audio Connection Kit, which won an open source award in 2004. In 2005, he released Ardor, an acclaimed digital audio workstation that continues to release updates to this day. Nicholas Lovejoy first met Jeff Bezos as a colleague during his time at D.E. Shaw. Lovejoy had left the firm to teach high school math in Seattle when Bezos hired him to work part-time for the company instead. One of Lovejoy's earliest contributions has since become a storied piece of Amazon lore. In the beginning, Bezos and his employees would pack shipping boxes on their hands and knees against a concrete floor. When Bezos complained that the process was straining his body, he suggested that he buy everyone knee pads. Lovejoy, understandably amused, suggested Bezos purchase tables instead. This became the blueprint for what would eventually become Amazon's vast packaging facilities, later dubbed fulfillment centers. After his first summer, Lovejoy was promoted to a full-time position and eventually became an IT manager. However, Lovejoy grew skeptical of Amazon's working conditions. 
1998, he left the company to travel the world and later started a philanthropic foundation with the money he made from Amazon stock. Lovejoy reportedly returned to Amazon in 2016 to help with their transportation department. Mike Hanlon joined the company in 1995. Before his departure in 2001, Hanlon oversaw the company's expansion from a bookseller into an everything store as its revenue increased over 300,000%. Amazon.com, this virtual shop claims to be the world's largest bookstore. One of Hanlon's memorable experiences at Amazon was having his then-girlfriend and now-wife Molly pack so many book shipments with him that Jeff Bezos had her sign a non-disclosure agreement. In 1999, the couple co-founded the Hanlon Foundation and began giving out grants to a variety of charitable organizations. In an interview with Taking Notes, Hanlon described his time at Amazon as a really intense experience. When I left Amazon, I thought, ah oh, gosh, I want to do something entirely different with my life. This inspired him to study economics at the University of Washington. He graduated with a PhD and became an assistant professor for their Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation, where he researched innovative ways to collect data on healthcare. This helped him form Abbott, a software that helped employers access and assess data on their healthcare benefits. Since launching in 2018, the company has raised over $12 million in venture capital. Beginning in 1995, Jonathan Cockmer wore a number of different hats at Amazon. Cockmer helped conceive of Amazon's earliest online promotions while acting as a senior editor, writing thousands of book reviews and curating its featured titles. When Amazon expanded beyond books, he conceived of a few of Amazon's data systems, including the now essential browse feature. Being an Amazon employee was intense for Cockmer. During one three-month period, he never left the office and simply showered at Amazon headquarters. Cockmer left the company in 2001, founding an independent record label turned public relations firm, Sarathon Records where he put out three alt-pop albums alongside musical partner Sarah Scott under the band name Two Loons for Tea. Their album Nine Lucid Dreams was nominated for Best Pop Rock Album at the 2008 Independent Music Awards. Cockmer is still involved in the tech world. He has contributed work on information systems for eco-friendly organizations and is a supporter of modern tech solutions such as artificial intelligence, machine learning, and blockchain. Todd Nelson joined Amazon in 1995, beginning as an operations manager at Amazon's then-basement warehouse. He later became one of the site's original editors, managing a staff of freelance writers. He also worked directly with authors and publishers to help them become part of Amazon's ecosystem, while helping the company launch part of its German expansion. Nelson left Amazon in 2001 and moved to Los Osos, California to settle down with his wife and newborn daughter. In 2014, he began lecturing at California Polytechnic State University and eventually was hired as the executive director of their Center for Innovation in Entrepreneurship, which advises students on becoming business owners. Nelson's life took an unexpected turn when he was diagnosed with interstitial lung disease or scarring on the lungs around his 50th birthday. Nelson proceeded to have two lung transplants, one in 2018 and one in 2021. Beginning in 1995, Scott Northrup became one of the company's most essential Unix programmers. He helped automate a template for packing slips, solved the company's Y2K bug, and most importantly, operated the company's payment system, which grew its sales to $1 billion a year. Northrop left Amazon in 2000. After 11 years as a partner with Fueling Technologies, he became CEO of Stark Raving Foods, a pizza production company committed to being a gluten-free alternative without sacrificing taste or ingredients. However, the company later closed. Ellen Radiak joined Amazon in March of 1996 and became an IT director, developing software that automated the company's fulfillment centers and their delivery systems. She also improved the company's customer service and helped initiate Amazon Associates, an affiliate marketing program. Radiak expressed mixed feelings regarding Jeff Bezos' behavior, telling the Washington Post in 2013, Bezos could be a royal ass but I do see a heart in Jeff. Jeff didn't want to just please customers or build loyalty. He wanted to delight customers. What matters to me is do we provide the best customer service. Radiak retired shortly after she left Amazon in 2001, although numerous altruistic efforts have since brought her out of retirement. In 2010, she became a board member of Organically Grown Company, a wholesale provider of organic produce throughout the Pacific Northwest, serving as board chair between 2014 and 2016. She also became part of the U.S. Digital Services team for the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, helping the department use technology to better understand and deliver services to veterans. Shortly after leaving the board in 2018, she became a committee member of Organically Grown's Offshoot Trust, the Sustainable Food and Agriculture Perpetual Purpose Trust, a position she held until 2019. Jeff Bezos and Mackenzie Scott began Amazon as a couple, but they weren't the only couple who worked there. Eric and Susan Benson joined the company together, though they contributed in different ways. 
Eric was a software engineer who pioneered the site's similarities function, which recommended additional books based on the one you were currently browsing. He also oversaw the transition from Unix to Linux operating systems. Susan served as editor-in-chief, crafting Amazon's voice, the copy customers would read as they went through the order process, as well as their editorial style guide. However, their most important contribution may have been their dog Rufus, who paved the way for Amazon's pet-friendly work policy and became a good luck charm for the company's infancy. Though Rufus passed away in 2009, he has gone on to become an unofficial mascot for the company. One commercial featured another dog the company called Rufus, and in 2024, they even named their new AI shopping program Rufus in his honor as well. As for Eric and Susan, they are alive and kicking. Their primary efforts have been in civil service. Both of them have used their previous Amazon expertise to work for the United States Digital Service, assisting government departments with technology that can better serve citizens, as well as the Democratic National Committee. Susan has also served as president and board chair for Town Hall Seattle, the city's arts center, and volunteered for Barack Obama's 2008 political campaign. Though she appears to be retired since 2018, Eric continues to work as an independent consultant.